on the season premiere of Ball State Baseball Believe. Practice begins for the season. Meet this year's captains. Travel along to Alaska for summer ball and the story of our inspirational teammate, Ryan Spaulding. Ball State Baseball Believe starts now. If you don't believe in yourself, you're done. If you don't believe in your teammates, you're done. If you don't believe in your coaches, you're done. You gotta root for your brother. You gotta believe. With sub-freezing temperatures and snow on the ground, baseball usually isn't the focus of many in Indiana. For us, Team 97, the journey of the 2015 Ball State baseball team started much earlier. January 6, the first practice of the year. The early mornings, two-day practices, and the weight room. All focused on the goal of winning the next championship for Ball State. One tradition in our preseason is Meet the Team Night. It's a chance for us to meet members of the community, sign autographs, raise money with the silent auction, and introduce ourselves as a 2015 team. With Meet the Team Night a success, the attention turned to our season opener February 13th. But for many of my teammates, the path to 2015 started last June with summer ball, including me traveling with my summer team to Alaska. All of uh, the baseball players go out and play summer ball and I went out to my summer team. I was playing for the Lake Erie Monarchs. One of the highlights that uh, my team got to do was we actually went out to Alaska for two weeks. Well, on my team, a bunch of college guys come together and join teams, and so there's guys from other schools in the MAC, and the Alaskan League is a lot uh, bigger competition, a lot uh, bigger schools go there, so playing against them was good for me personally for my game. We played probably 11 games in that many days, so we were playing every day, but we also just didn't want to go just to play baseball. We went to enjoy it, too. The whole team, one of the highlights was uh, going out. We went halibut fishing. Two hours to a spot where well, you catch a lot of halibut. And uh, yeah, we got to do that, fish. And you bring them in, they're probably 20 pounds a piece. And, you know, you get, it really takes it out of you to get, get them in the boat. I ain't doing that. No way. The, the Midnight Sun game, which is one of baseball's greatest traditions, uh, they've been doing it for, I think, 109 years now. And that's a game that's played uh, under, under the sun. At, it's played throughout midnight, so when it's normally dark in Alaska, it's not dark in the summer, so um, we played there. I think the game started around 10.30, and uh, we played a whole nine inning game without lights, and it ended around 1.15 in the morning. The crowd and the electricity of the, of the game really kind of just pushed through that, and so you go out, and there are probably 3,000 people out there in a small field, and so they're all cheering against you, booing you, and it just gets you going, the competitor inside you. One of my other great experiences was taking an airplane ride up to Mount McKinley. Me and my dad did that. Got on an airplane, flew around probably a couple hours in the morning. You, you fly up and you're 10,000 feet in the air and there's still mountains above you. <laughs> and I think that's kind of crazy. Uh, we were actually able to, to land on a glacier right at uh, the base camp of Mount McKinley. We got out and walked around. 
we actually were able to talk to some, some climbers that were going up right at that time. So it was cool to just, you're not the only thing there. You're not just, everybody's focused on you playing baseball. Like there's a lot going on in Alaska. It makes you feel kind of small, but that feeling it also makes you grateful just for the opportunity to go out and see other things, experience stuff. Besides preparing on the fundamentals, the strength of a team is found through brotherhood. This year we bonded in an entirely new way. We actually had every boy before the season started had a chance to share something inspirational that would be motivational to their teammates. And they all had seven minutes to do it. The most they could use as video was two minutes and I think we only had out of the 35 guys maybe three people use any kind of video. So it was pretty much them public speaking, which was great. They did a fabulous job. Well, I put some thought into it. Um, I actually showed uh, Will Smith's Pursuit of Happiness clip when him and his little kid are, are shooting baskets, and uh, he told him he told his little son that you know you probably shouldn't take up basketball because you know you're going to be as good as me. I wasn't very good. Blah blah blah. And at the end, he's like, "Don't ever let someone tell you you can't do something. You know, go after your dreams. Um, do whatever it takes." And I, I think that clip. It, you can pretty much summarize our season with that. You know, nobody outside of Ball State is giving us a chance to do anything significant in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, it's our dream, and we should protect it, and we should go after it. And um, that's what I kind of touched on when I did my speech. Growing up on the south side of Chicago in the city, um, seeing things that you may not want to see and things like that, but uh, I've just had a blessing of having great um, parents who have been able to raise me through sports and um, like that as to where I didn't have to experience a lot of things and um, just being able to go through that adversity and say so what keep going uh, so what keep pushing through it and uh, I just related that back to the team saying man we're gonna have times this season where we're gonna have some faults we're gonna have some uh, low lights of the season but uh, so what, we gotta keep pushing through it. I talked about the mental game, and uh, I think that's a big key, in for, especially for pitchers. Um, and I read a little piece from this book called Mind Gym about Alex Rodriguez and how, what he thought in the mental game. You know, the whole idea is just, uh, it's about the team. It's about the team, and so what are our goals? Solidifying, hearing each other say that for each other, hearing, getting to know each other better. Um, some guys shared some very personal stories. And, uh, you know, but it, within our context of our locker room, our family, um, that was, uh, it was pretty special. Leadership is not given, it is earned. We are blessed to have teammates and captains who set the tone for our team. This year's captains are Jared James, Ryan Spaulding, and Scott Baker. Just trying to get a group of people to pull together and pull for one another, I think is the, I guess that's the challenge of coaching and it's the great thing of coaching. Because uh, when you see it happen, it's powerful. Uh, first, it's just an honor um, to have my teammates feel that um, I'm somebody who can lead them. Um, and also, it's um, a big weight upon my shoulder that I don't uh, take for granted at all. Uh, like I said, it's a blessing, but at the same time, it's something where I understand all right, it's an obligation to help my teammates um, and help this team get to where we need to be. And obviously, I was voted as a captain, which is a great honor. Um, you know, being more vocal, I've always been a leader by example. Um, just that little stuff, um, just doing whatever it takes to win. Um, just continue to play good defense, um, be a leader on the infield. My leadership style, I'm, I'm kind of like quiet. Uh, I'm not a big vocal guy, um, but I do, I, I lead by example. So when I go out on the mound, I try to lead by example, show the younger guys, since we have really young uh, pitching staff, I try to show them just like how to act out there. You don't want to show your emotions out there and let the hitter see your emotions. We definitely have three different personalities, um, which is a good thing, I think. Um, you know, Jared is the more outgoing, vocal, um, you know, raw, raw guy. Um, Baker's more of the quiet, lead by example, and I guess, you know, I'm kind of in the middle. We do everything together. 
I mean, if, we, if we're going somewhere, we're going to invite people. We have like uh, Player Fridays where we go out to the Mexican restaurant and eat. So um, just stuff, little stuff like that makes us a better team. We all have this joint vision of, like we said, over and over, making it to Omaha. And that's what we're pushing to do. And uh, that's just something that as leaders on the team with myself and Ryan and Scott, uh, we just all hold each other accountable to and uh, just keep working, keep pushing guys day in and day out. We have a thing in there where we look in the mirror and uh, we say, you know, I'm going to compete for my team today. You know, it's about the team, not about me. And then they go on their business. Now there's a little bit more of entitlement um, within our society. And you know, we've got to combat that. And I think, um, you know, we try through all the different things we do with the weightlifting and the early morning stuff and always talking about team and bringing up speakers who from pro baseball, like former players, who say you'll never be on a team like you will when you, what you have in college. Because when you turn pro, it's like dog eat dog world versus when you're in the context of a college campus, you have a chance to really be a, a good teammate. And there's something beautiful about that. So I think that's the difference. After six weeks practicing inside and minimal reps outside, we started, along with all of college baseball, the road to Omaha. The season was here. We traveled to Wilmington, North Carolina, and opened our season against the Kentucky Wildcats. First delivery from Henderson is drilled out towards center field. This ball has a chance, looking up as Eppers, and it's gone. Fettis has left the yard for the second time today and Kentucky leads nine to nothing. Wrap back through the middle. That's through for a base hit. One run's gonna score. Rounding third and headed for home is Kennedy. The throw is cut off and two runs score. Ball State within six, 10 to four on a two RBI single for Davari. Salo from the windup comes home. Swing and a miss, strike three and Kentucky survives. A late Ball State rally came up short dropping our season opener 11-7. The next day proved challenging, falling to the host Seahawks of UNC Wilmington, 4-2. Ball State down to their final strike. He comes home, swung on and popped out to left. Camped underneath it is Linkus. This could be the ball game. He gloves it, and that's your ball game. A week later, we were back on the road, this time to South Carolina. Our focus changed, our bats came alive, our pitching was on point, our confidence continued to grow. Swing a grounder over towards Staten. This could do it. He fields it, steps on first, and the Cardinals sweep the weekend series here from Aiken, South Carolina, and victorious in four straight games. You, you come to the ballpark feeling loose, you're confident, and uh, that increases your chances for success. We're earning the respect considering where we came from a couple years ago when the team had won 14 and 15 games prior to us coming. Uh, and then we go to 31 wins in the first year and then 39. Uh, that's, you know, it was an impressive climb by our kids. With that being said, um, that means we've earned, we're earning the respect of the rest of the league. That's what that means. But at the end of the day, you got to keep earning it. It doesn't just stop, you know. I mean, the moment that you let your guard down, someone else is going to pass you up. I just think it's a culture that Coach Maloney has built here where each year you understand you don't settle. Um, you don't settle for what you got the previous year. You keep pushing to the next level, to the next level. And uh, that's one thing that we plan to do with this season now um, with our dream making it through, not just to a regional, but through a regional, through a super, super regional all the way. When Coach Maloney came in, he just changed that whole culture um, to a winning culture. And We've had some success the past two years, and um, just coming together as a brotherhood is probably the biggest lesson I've learned. Um, you know, come, working as a team, it's not about the individual. Um, and if you look at our team, we don't have a bunch of superstars. And we're just a band of brothers. The biggest way I feel like he affects this program is he believes in us. Uh, our motto is you gotta believe, but it's really true. Um, every Everything we do, uh, Coach believes, uh, believes in us, and, every single thing we do. You gotta believe, that's for sure. It's, everything starts with that. You know, every time when I've had three programs I've had the privilege of working with, 
we always started off with you got to believe because if you don't believe in yourself, you're done. If you don't believe in your teammates, you're done. If you don't believe in your coaches, you're done. If you want to be a championship team, you got to believe in each other. You got to have buy-in. You got to um, really believe what's being taught is um, can help you get better. And uh, you got to root for your brothers. And uh, so you got to believe will always be paramount wherever I'm at. And the beautiful, beautiful thing of it is, is that the kids, they've owned it. So you'll hear them all the time. They'll bring your hands up when they get together and just, you got to believe. It's really a staple for what, who we are. Let's go. This year could be special because we can build off of last year. Um, you know, we didn't necessarily get to where we wanted to last year. Ultimately, we accomplished one of our goals, but our second goal, we didn't get to the NCAA tournament. And I think we can build off of that this year and definitely, you know, reach that goal and heck, maybe even make a run in it. So um, the expectations are high, but I think we can reach them. We have a lot of guys returning from last year, um, so we can build off that. Um, success from last year, you know, the younger guys have really bought in and, um, you know, last year we were really close-knit, but I think this year we're pretty similar and, you know, when you pull together in, the, in one direction, you can achieve anything. I just try to meet my goals and uh, I hope that helps the team out. All the intangibles I thought I could get better at, um, you know, being a leader, being encouraging, um, you know, being a good teammate, I could be even better at that. Um, you know, and just being just a all, all like overall good person. Um, you know, just we had so many freshmen come in. I thought, you know, I'd try to be that leader, try to help them out. I mean, coming as a freshman is kind of a big culture shock. So, you know, with having so many of those guys, we, we just had to come together as a team and help those guys out. So, those, the intangibles are probably what I worked on the most. I'm the oldest guy on the pitching staff by far. I've been here before. I, I know what it takes to win uh, my sophomore year. Uh, I went 12-2, and two, so I know exactly what it takes to win. So uh, hopefully I can lead by example. To play for Ball State um, is kind of just all out. We're just a team that's going to grind, and that's what it means to play for Ball State. Just guys who are going to go out there day in, day out. Um, no matter what the circumstances are, uh, we could be playing in 40-degree weather at uh, 7 a.m. I mean, that's even why we do the workouts at 4 a.m. Uh, no matter what, it doesn't matter. We're just going to strap it on and play some baseball. If I make a mistake, I'm going to just try to get the next guy out. I, it's my job for me to try to get that next guy out for our team and try to just pick up our brothers. Those little things, those, those are little goals. So we might set a goal in a game where we say, hey, we only want to have uh, five strikeouts today. So everybody's fighting. How we approach that is we say, the first two strikes are yours, the third one's for the team. So again, it's not about you, it's about team. There you go, that's pop the back side. Come on, don't have a lazy Man, it's just time. an awesome feeling being able to uh, experience these times just with, like you said, a band of brothers where um, you know each other, we all have each other's back. Um, just going through the workouts that we've gone through where um, we're all going through it together. And then when you get to spend that time on the field, that's just a chance for you to just have some fun. Uh, when the game time is started, uh, that's just when we get to go out there and do what we all love to do, uh, that we all have been raised to do. Just go out there, have some fun, play a great game of baseball. When I was a freshman, older guys really helped me out. So, I mean, it's the least you can do when you get older. Um, you realize it's tough. Um, being away from family is tough. But at the same time, you're with your brothers. so. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see it challenging at all. It's, it's really fun, actually. You know, you, you can see similarities in yourself to what they're going through and, um, you know, from what you went through as a freshman, too. So, I mean, they're coming along. I think they're going to, you know, make contributions to this team. Ryan's battle doesn't end after the final out. His fight isn't just against an opponent, but also his own body. Yeah, I, I was, you know, I was told my whole life that I was too small, I wasn't fast enough, and you know, I wasn't big enough to play Division One baseball. But here I am, and um, I play with that chip on my shoulder daily. Um, you know, proving people wrong and just playing hard. I've kind of changed with handling adversity. Um, everybody goes through it, but I think I've seen my fair share. It was 
part of his life pretty much as soon as he could hold a ball. Ryan Spaulding was destined to play baseball. His dad played baseball and all through his life and in college and so um, they were out in the yard playing a lot and, and, and in the house too so <laughs> yeah it's always been a part of his life. Just playing catch in different ways um, throwing long to strengthen his arm and we were out there in the snow sometimes and it's cold and you know sometimes he wanted to go sometimes he didn't want to go but it, it, looking back on it wouldn't trade it for the world. Growing up Spalding flourished in sports and while he blossomed in baseball it wasn't always easy taking pointers from his dad. There was times that me and him butted heads pretty good in the backyard. I would you know yell out the door, the back door, say, are we having fun yet? Are you having fun yet? I can vividly remember two or three times. I was just trying to make sure he did things the right way early, so if this ever did help, you know, come to where he could do it at this level, it would help him, and I think sometimes it has. And so, the bond forged through the backyard led Spalding in his father's footsteps to play college baseball. We had just finished a tournament in Georgia and we got home and I remember looking at Ryan and he just, all right, I got two weeks here where I'm home before we go to, you know, and I thought, okay. And that's exactly when the symptoms came. I was working out and getting ready to come here for workouts and, you know, running and stuff. And I was just feeling real lightheaded, uh, real dizzy. I mean, I played basketball for four years in high school, and I never had problems like running and stuff. Like, I was never dizzy or anything, so I knew something was up, and I just felt real fatigued, uh, real tired. It was actually a really bad situation, and we went to the ER where I work, and um, he had a really, really low blood count. He had lost a lot of blood. The loss of blood signaled what ultimately was Crohn's disease an inflammatory bowel condition where the immune system fights itself. Two weeks before leaving for college, he'd temporarily lose the one constant in his life. Baseball. But I just remember thinking this was not a good time to come to college, baseball, and then this happened. How is this going to affect his freshman season? Is it going to affect what the coaches think of him? Is he going to be able to perform? Is he going to be able to prove himself with this? You know, is he going to be able to play baseball? It hit us really hard. I wanted to get off on the right foot here at Ball State, and I didn't participate in any activities for like a month or two. So that was real hard on me because I wanted to be with the guys. When he got hit with that Crohn's disease, um, you know, I was certainly concerned as we were learning more about the disease and such. That was the hardest thing is keeping him positive and keeping him um, upbeat and, and trying to get him through. It was hard. It really was. Um, at times, you know, I was on my dorm room floor just in pain. After managing the disease through long-term medication, Spalding was clear for his freshman season. He never says anything about the illness. You know, at the beginning when he first went through it last year, you know, we had to talk about it more. He hasn't even talked about it once this year. So quite honestly, I don't even really know he has an illness the way he acts. And uh, what a tremendous uh, tribute that is to him and his wherewithal and his determination and uh, his no excuse attitude. And looking back, the lessons learned through Crohn's have helped develop Ryan Spaulding. I just think he's a tougher kid for it. He, um, you know, anytime you go, you have adversity, um, you have to rise to the occasion. I think Crohn's has made him into a more mentally tough young man. Can't tell he's going through anything. He really can't. He never lets anybody know, he never complains. He's, he's the same every day, and that is impressive. He doesn't get 
really down on the bad days and he really doesn't get really up on the, on the great days. He's pretty, he's pretty even keeled. I think Crohn's has helped him with that. If you could go back and change things, would you? Nope. Why not? It's just that everything happens for a reason, I guess. Um, maybe this was a lesson to be learned for me. Uh, maybe I can help others someday. Um, who knows what could happen. On the next episode of Believe, I take the GoPro on our spring break trip to South Carolina and Florida. We play our first game on our new turf field, and we learn more about sophomore third baseman Sean Kennedy. Ball State Baseball Believe 2015 is a production of Ball State Sportslink, an immersive learning production. Follow our team on Twitter at BallStateBB and catch every episode and feature this season by following at BSU Sportslink. Link.